dates aren't the same as regular sugar. They don't respond the same in the body. Sure, they have sugar. Sure, they are a carbohydrate. And at the end of the day, carbohydrates do operate similarly in our body when they're broken down into pure glucose, fructose, whatever. But there are key differences here. They are not potato, potato. They are very different. And the thing is, is when you look at the literature, it makes some more sense. Now, it's not just because of the fiber in a date. Okay, dates, yes, they have fiber. They are a whole fruit, so it's different than just consuming pure table sugar. But there's something fundamentally different, and we will break it all down. So first, we need to look at a study that actually analyzes the difference between fruit juice and a sugar solution inside the body, which is wild because most of us think fruit juice is pure sugar. And fruit juice does have a lot of sugar, but when we look at it like this, it really puts it in a different perspective. So let's break it down. And after today's video, I put a link down below for Element, Element Electrolytes. So drink lmnt.com slash Thomas. So Element Electrolytes are 1,000 milligrams sodium. They are 60 milligrams magnesium and 200 milligrams potassium. They have zero calories. They also have a sparkling version, which is really, really delicious, but they're a great way to just curb the appetite. So if you're looking to reduce the sugar out of your diet a little bit more, but you want something sweet and something satiating and something that's going to get you through it, plus provide electrolyte replenishment, Element is the way to go. So that link down below gets you a free sample variety pack with any purchase. So anything you buy, you get that free variety pack that has all their different flavors. So you can keep it, give it to a friend, do whatever you want with it. So thanks to Element. And again, that link in the top line of the description, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. So this study was published in Nutrients. Okay, so it's a four-week study where they gave rodents four different kinds of fruit juices or a sugar solution that they could consume ad libitum. So it was the same amounts of sugar, same concentration, same content of sugar. Just one was from fruit juice and one was from a sugar solution. With the ad libitum fruit juice, they could consume as much as they wanted to, and they saw no increase in fasting blood glucose. Now with the sugar solution, there was an increase in fasting glucose. In the sugar solution group, there was an increase in caloric intake that there was not in the fruit juice group, and there was also an increase in oxidative stress. Okay, well maybe that has something to do with the polyphenols that are in the fruit juice that's protecting from the oxidative stress. I don't know how you really explain the caloric intake change, maybe the difference in fructose versus sucrose, but the interesting thing is, is that even with sucrose, you're still looking a decent percentage of fructose because sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose. We're not talking pure glucose here. So it's actually more of a similar makeup to fruit than people would typically think. What else is interesting is in the sugar group, there is an increase in weight gain. There is an increase in overall hyperglycemia and an increase in insulin resistance. A lot of times it's a which came first, the chicken or the egg situation with fatty liver and insulin resistance. And some would say that, well, fruit juice would give you a fatty liver because of the fructose. But in this case, it was the sugar solution that actually increased insulin resistance, implying that there could be a change in fatty liver. They didn't test this with this study, which would have been interesting to see. Lastly, there was impaired glycation with the sugar group that wasn't with the fruit group, meaning that it was promoting the activation or the advanced glycation in product effect. So more glycation. Now, when we look at dates, we do have to understand that in a whole food date, it's going to be lower glycemic. That's probably because of fiber, but also a number of different things and how it's ripened. For example, a study published in Diabetes and Metabolic Syndrome looked at different dates, and they found that like Rutab dates are about a 47 on the glycemic index scale. That's actually pretty low. Okay, then you have tamer dates in a sun-dried fashion, which are about a 45 or so on the glycemic index scale. And then you have tamer dates that are more commercially ripened, you're looking at these down to like a 35, 36 on the glycemic index scale. So we have a wide variety. And then there's even some dates, depending on how they're ripened, that can be as high as a 74. So I encourage you to do some research. Maybe you can just Google it or chat GPT it or something where you find like what date kinds are going to be the lowest GI. Because yeah, it has to do with fiber, antioxidants, but it could also just do with how it's ripened. And even then, it's a negligible difference in the taste in some ways for those that aren't familiar with dates. Probably the most profound piece is that dates contain a very small amount of allulose. Now, allulose is also a little bit in raisins. It's also a little bit in figs, okay? Figs and dates happen to be two fruits that I'm a big fan of, particularly figs because they're even lower sugar content than dates. 
But this is interesting because with allulose, there was a cool study published in BMJ where they took 30 non-diabetic people. They gave them 50 grams of sucrose. So 50 grams sucrose bolus. And then they gave them two and a half grams or five grams or seven and a half grams or 10 grams of deallulose. What they found is that in a dose dependent fashion, allulose brought their blood sugar down and 30 minutes after consumption actually brought their insulin levels down too indicating that it was actually helping the clearance of glucose. I've talked about allulose before on this channel, but in this particular case, the reason it's probably having this profound effect with dates is threefold. One, there is an increase in GLP-1 activity. So more GLP-1 having an ozympic-like effect. Okay, so GLP-1, therefore making it so that you're more satiated, you possibly eat less, but also end up clearing the glucose and putting it where it needs to go better. Second, it inhibits alpha glucosidase, which means it literally slows down the breakdown of the carbohydrates a little bit more. And thirdly, it binds to the GLUT2 receptor. Now the GLUT2 receptor is interesting because it takes glucose predominantly and puts it in the liver. Now GLUT2 receptors have a very low affinity for sugar, but a high capacity. And what that means is that they, in the presence of high blood sugar, they can soak up a lot of the overage. So they're very good at taking that extra and putting it somewhere else. So they help it get into the liver. So if they take and they occupy that GLUT2 receptor with allulose, you're reducing the amount of sugar that's going into the liver, which thereby means you could help prevent more in the way of insulin resistance, but you could also help clear that glucose so it doesn't contribute to extra sugar in the liver. So then it's actually able to be utilized by other cells and possibly just reducing it overall and thereby allowing other glucose transporters to put it into the muscle cells. One of the most interesting things though about dates is if you eat a whole date and you also get the date seeds, there's interesting evidence on the antioxidant profile of the date seeds themselves and so the date seed extract. And with this, we look at a study published in scientific reports. It was mechanistic, but it looked at the impact of date seeds on the pancreas. So this study found that date seeds decreased the oxidative stress and decreased the inflammation in the pancreas and thereby allowed the pancreatic islet cells to produce more insulin. This is tremendous because again, from an insulin resistance standpoint, it's allowing the pancreas to produce more insulin, which allows the body to deal with glucose better, which subsequently long-term requires less insulin to be produced because you retain or regain that sensitivity and you don't have this vicious cycle happening anymore. There's also a few other really interesting things about dates. For one, they're very high in beta-glucans. Beta-glucans are a type of sugarish, they technically a sugar, I guess, prebiotic fiber, however you want to classify them. There's like multiple glucose molecules that are bound together, but we cannot activate them or access them because we don't have the enzyme to unlock all those glucose molecules bound together. So essentially it forms a gel. So you think like oatmeal, high in beta glucans, that's why it gets gelatinous and weird. So when you eat dates, it forms a gelatinous like substance in your gut that actually makes it harder to absorb the sugar. Then you also have galactomannan, which is another interesting compound that forms a gel-like substance. So dates, when they're in our gut, we probably don't absorb all the sugar. That's probably what's quite interesting about it, why they don't have the same blood sugar impact. Now, they're still sugar. So please keep in mind, I don't think you should just go out willy-nilly eating all of them. But also the saponins that are in dates have a profound effect on oxidative stress and inflammation. So at the end of the day, I hope you're sticking with me through this whole video, know that dates are still sugar. And if you have insulin resistance or you're dealing with blood sugar issues, I don't suggest you go and eat a handful of them. But if you're trying to sweeten something and you really want sugar, perhaps using date sugar or even whole mashed dates is just a better option for you. As always, please keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.